the question is called game of profit okay you are given the predicted price of xyz's company share for every minute each minute you are allowed to either buy one share of xyz or sell as many number of shares of xyz that you own uh, or not many your, or not make any transaction at all your task is to find out the maximum profit all prices are between 1 and 10 is to 5 okay so the question goes like this let's say imagine that these are the prices okay so these are the prices 5 3 2 <laughs> meaning that on day 1 the price was 5 then day 2 the price became 3 and the day became the day 3 it became 2 what's the maximum profit i can get if i buy on a particular day and sell on a next day i cannot get any profit over here right so this is game of profit so i can't get any profit over here because i can't really sell anything right uh, i mean if i buy at 5 i'm going to get a loss at 3 and if i try to sell it to then i'm going to get even a bigger loss right so there's no way that i can buy something so the i don't actually buy anything and my my profit is equal to zero in this case right let's go to the next one where it says 1 2 and 100 so i get 1 2 and 100 right in this case what's the maximum profit that i can get what is the maximum profit that i can end up getting over here what does the question say by the way do i have to buy every day do i have to buy or not make any transactions i can choose not to make any transaction also right and initially speaking hmm okay and in this question it's saying wait the question is a bit wrong is it not so for 1 for 3 1 2 and 100 it's saying that i can have a 197 profit how could i have a 197 profit here 97 i can still get because you'll buy at 1 you'll buy at 2 and then you'll sell 100 so buying it the 197 doesn't make sense right is that just a typo on the question let's just see Just a typo on the question itself. No, it's it's the expected output one ninety seven. So we are making anybody have any thoughts on this? Either you can buy one share or sell any number of shares of X Y Z that you own. or not make any transaction at all your task is to find the maximum profit hmm. so i could buy one share and this is the price of one share right so if i buy this one at 1 rupees the next day i have the price going to 2 rupees right it's interesting let's look at this so i buy let's say i have let's say i have x share so i buy one share for 1 rupees the next day i can sell that same share for 2 rupees is that how that works one share for 1 rupees that one share value is now 2 rupees so now if i sell it i will get 2 rupees correct i will have 2 rupees right by selling it so i sell i'll sell it Oh yeah, correct, right? I I I'm just blanking for something. Buy one at one rupees, right? Buy another one. Thanks for that. Uh, for for giving me that input. I don't know why I blanked completely on this. Uh, buy an buy another one at two rupees. So how many shares do I have? I have currently two shares, right? And spent 
my spend is right now minus three rupees, right? Now when I sell both shares, sell both shares, what will I get? I'll get two hundred rupees because on the third day the price is two hundred. My net is equal to one ninety seven. That's why one ninety seven. Okay. Are you all understanding this? Now is it clear, everybody? Right? Is this uh, clear? The logic. At every day, you'll just buy one share. That's it. Or you you can either buy one share at every point, or you can sell the entire thing off, whatever your portfolio is, or sell some of your portfolio at this price. Right? So, does does this make sense, everyone? What uh, what the question is talking about? Is this clear? Do do tell me, give me a clear if uh, you've got it. Can you explain once again? Sure, I'll I'll explain once. Basically speaking, at every just look at it this way. At every point, you either have a buy option or a sell option. Now, currently, I don't even have any shares. So let's say if I buy, is it worth even buying one? It is because later on I'm going to get a profit. I am going to get a profit later on. So it's worth buying one. Now, how do you know if you're going to get later on? Well, they've given you the entire array, so you can scan the array. So I know that for this one, I know that one I'm going to get a profit eventually. So I will. um i'll buy it okay so how many shares do i have i have one share over here right and how much is my spend so far and how much is my earning so far right so my spend so far is one my earning so far is zero because i don't have any earning then i move here should i buy or should i sell again i know that late if i buy today selling later on would be good buying at one and selling at two is not a great profit i'm getting only one profit whereas if i buy at one and sell at 100 it would be even better Right, I'll get like ninety nine profit. Right, so I'll again what I'll do is I have another share I'll buy. How much I'll spend this time? I'll spend two rupees, and my earning is again zero. And finally, and and by last one, should I buy or sell here? There's no point buying or buying over here because I will not have another time to sell it. So let me sell my shares. When I try to sell my shares, I have two shares. I'm going to I'm going to not spend anything, but I'll get. Two hundred, two hundred earning. I'm going to get two hundred earning over there. So if I'm going to get two hundred earning, what's the total now over here? My spend is minus three, and earning is two hundred. So I've got a total profit of one ninety seven. Does it make sense? Right. Okay. So how do we solve this? Um, we can let's let's look at the approach over here. The approach we can follow is actually fairly standard once you understand this. Buy. a share only if you can only if you can sell it later right margin on each share or that is how much you'll get plus for that each share is equal to buying price or other selling price or not even selling price max selling price minus buying price okay because if you look at the other way this one the profit i'm going to make it i'll spend one on this but the profit i'll make is 99 rupees because i know on the right side the maximum price i'm going to get is 100 rupees so i'll make a profit of 99 rupees same thing here for two i'm going to make a profit of 98 rupees so 98 plus 99 197 i'm going to get over here okay so basically at each step i have to make a choice should i buy it or not i only buy it if there is a share greater than me on the right side and the margin of that share is going to be whatever is the maximum value on the right side so this question now becomes find the maximum value on right side for every element right find the maximum element on the right side for all of the elements that are there okay how do i do that um, this is a simple Like a prefix sums kind of an approach where I'll create an array. So, for example, this one two hundred. What I'll do is I'll actually create an array which finds the maximum element on the right side. The way I'll do that is for hundred there is no maximum element on the right side, so it's minus one. For two it is the next element. It's either if it's greater than two then it's the next element. So for two it's hundred is the maximum element on the right side, right? And for one also it's hundred. So if the maximum element on the right side is greater than One, if it's greater than one, so we'll sell one at hundred rupees, 
and we'll sell two at hundred rupees. The margin you're going to get on this is for one, the margin will be plus ninety nine, and here the margin will be plus ninety eight. So overall, you'll get one ninety seven. So I need to maintain an array which contains the maximum element on the right side. All right, clear everybody so far. Let me go ahead and try to implement it. Public static void main string x okay and uh, import java dot util star okay. So it's also given the size of the array. So that also makes it easy. So we'll say int n is the size of the array and we'll say int ARR is equal to new int n. But before that, I need to take in the n as well. Int n is equal to scan dot next int. But before that, I need to define the scanner also. So scanner scan is equal to new scanner system dot in right awesome so once we have done this i scan the next element int error is new int and i also need to create the int max right int max underscore right is equal to new int n as well so this will store the maximum element on the right side so for now let's actually just take input the array It will take input the particular array, which is ARRI is equal to scan dot next int. Once I've taken input the array, now I'll just use, I'll go in reverse this time. I'm going to go in reverse, i is equal to zero, or not i is equal to zero, i equal to n minus one, i greater than equal to zero, i minus minus. Now, in this case, the first element, sorry, for the last element, max underscore right of i for the max element, let's say n minus one, it's always going to be minus one. You're not going to have a greater element on the right side. There is no element on the right side. So there's not going to be any greater element on the right side at all. So let's just keep it as minus one. So we'll start at n minus two actually. And I'll say maximum element on the right side uh, for my current element is. Um, Should I start from n minus two? Yeah. So maximum element on the right side is equal to the maximum of either the current maximum. So which is maximum element of I is equal to whatever is the maximum of right of I plus one or ARR i plus one let me explain this one to you let me explain this uh this one to all of you all so i'll just create another array here just to show you if we had an array of something like this let's say um you know one five three nine two twenty three and four right and now if i had to create a maximum so this is the arr so arr is equal to this right now if i had to create the max on the right side what i'll do is i'll start at the end I know that four doesn't have anything. So I'll put a minus one here Four, there's no element on the right side for 23. The max element is either whatever is the max element on the right side for four or four itself, one of the two. So for 23, it's four. That's fine. Now you'll understand here for two, the maximum element is either whatever is the maximum element at the like beyond 23 or 23 itself, because 23 is the new entrant. So it becomes. 23 right for nine maximum element on the right side is either two or maximum element to the right of two, which is 23. So between them, 23 is the greater element okay. for three maximum element on the right side is either nine or the maximum on the right side of nine, which is what, which is 23. So it's going to be 23 itself. So for all of these, it becomes. 23, 23, 23. That's what it becomes for all of them. Okay. So this is the thing we're calculating. Now you could go from at one and go to the right side, calculate the maximum at five, calculate the maximum that would become order N square, but we wanted to be order N. So what we're saying is find whatever is the maximum on the 
right side of you know i plus one and array of i plus one, whichever is the maximum. Now in um, Java, you don't really have a max like that, so you'll have to do math dot max, right? So that's what you'll have to do it over here. So max of uh, max right of i is this, right? And uh, once you calculate the max right of i, what you need to do is then go for int i equal to zero, i less than n. I plus plus, right? For each element, you make a decision of either, um, you know, you you basically calculate the margin. So I'll say int total is equal to zero, and the total margin will be equal to either I'm buying this particular element now and selling it later, right? So when will I sell? I'll only sell. So I'll say if max underscore right of i is greater than ARRI. So that means I have an element on the right side, which is greater than me. That's the only time I'll buy this and I'll sell it. So I'll say that, okay, total is equal to total minus ARRI plus max right I, because this is the maximum margin that I'm going to get. This is the margin that I'm going to get, right? Do that only if it's greater, if it is not greater then there's no point buy buying here because I have nothing on the right side, which is greater than me, right? If there was, then we'd have a maximum element on the right side, but we don't have. So I'll only do this. If I have a value on the right side, which is greater than me over there. Right. Um, and yeah, after that, I system now print total. So that should be the case. Let's see if we have any, all right. So this one passes. And let's see over here also passes the test cases. All right. Did you guys get this? Any doubts or questions in this approach, everybody?